ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد Once again, I welcome all of you. We continue studying together, alhamdulillah, from al mulakhas al-fiqhi of our noble Shaykh al-Allama, al-Doktor Salih bin Fawzan al-Fawzan, hafidhahu Allah ta'ala wa matta'ahu bil sahha wa al-afiyah wa ghafara lahu wa al-walidayh wa al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. We see in the chapter of marriage, babun fi al-shuruti fi al-nikah, conditions made before marriage. So we learn in this chapter that yes, there is certain conditions that the spouses they may stipulate before marriage. I want to marry you, but there is this and this, this condition, this condition. What is the ruling of these conditions? This we're going to learn, insha'Allah ta'ala. قال الشيخ صالح الفوزان حفظه الله المراد بالشروط في النكاح ما يشرطه أحد الزوجين في العقد على الآخر مما له فيه مصلحة ومحلها ما كان في العقد أو اتفق عليه قبله وهي تنقسم إلى قسمين صحيح وفاسد What is intended by the conditions in marriage in the marriage contract is that which is stipulated by the, by the these, these are the conditions set in the marriage contract by one of the two spouses and to be fulfilled by the other in the best interest of the former. They are stipulated whether through the marriage contract or any previous agreement. As such, conditions are of two kinds. There are the valid conditions and invalid conditions. There are those conditions that are valid and there are conditions they are not valid. أولا الشروط الصحيحة في النكاح Number one, the Sheikh is going to mention firstly the conditions that are valid in marriage. فمن الشروط الصحيحة عند الأكثرين إذا شرطت عليه طلاق ضرتها ضرتها لأن لها في ذلك فائدة وقال بعض ال البعض الآخر من العلماء بعدم صحة هذا الشرط لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى أن تسأل المرأة أختها المرأة طلاق أختها لتكفأ ما في إنائها والنهي يقتضي الفساد According to the opinion of many of the scholars that one of the valid stipulations and conditions when a woman stipulate that the person who wants to marry her divorce his first wife if he has a first wife and now he wants to marry he wants to take on another one she's like it's okay but you have to divorce the first one that's the stipulation that she makes okay so a man wants to marry a woman. She knows he has a wife. She said the only way she marry him if she if he divorced the first one. Okay? Because the sheikh is that as a, such a divorce is in her is in her interest. You know? That's the interest of the woman. Other scholars view that such a condition is invalid. As the Prophet ﷺ forbade a woman to ask for the divorce of another woman so as to take her place as a wife. Okay? And that hadith is agreed upon by, by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and the word in Sayyid al-Bukhari on the authority of Abu Hurairah anh. And the Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, he says, وَالنَّهْيُ يقتضي الفساد 
Prophet, the fact that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited a woman from doing so, so it means that it is invalid to do that. That shows the invalidity of such thing and such action. I'm going to read to you so from Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen from his book Al-Sharh al mumtah a book of fiqh Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen he says in a, <coughs> in page 243 of volume 5 قال Ibn Uthaymeen رحمه الله إذا اشترطت أن لا يتزوج عليها فإن هذا يجوز Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen he says if a woman for instance she made a stipulation and, a, and make a condition. The man wants to marry her, she says, yes, but with one condition. If you do not marry any other woman, as long as you marry, he is married to her. Sheikh said, this is permissible. Okay? وَقَالَ بَعْدُ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَجُوزُ لَأَنَّهُ حَجْرٌ عَلَى الزَّوَاجِ فيما أَبَحَ اللَّهُ لَهُ some of the ulama, some of the scholars, he says, no, it's not permissible for the woman to make such a stipulation. Because now she's, uh, because that against the, what Allah has made permissible for the men. And that position of hers, that, that stipulation is in opposition to the Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Nikah, فَنْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ Allah addressing the man to marry, that is permissible for men to marry uh, from the women, one, two, three, uh, on four, up to four. قال الشيخ فيقال في الجواب هذا ليس في الكتاب. هذا ليس في الكتاب هذا. This is not in the book. If somebody looking in the book, you can take notes. This is from Sharh al Mumta. Now, so, فيقال في الجواب على ذلك. So, Sheikh Muratimi says the answer to this, because now he mentioned, the ulama, they mentioned it's permissible. Some of the ulama, they says, no, it's not permissible for a woman to make such a stipulation. Okay? That he does not marry another woman. He says, here is the answer to this matter. قال هي لها غرض في عدم زواجه. He says yes, he has an interest for him not to marry another woman. ولم تعتدي على أحد. She's not. She didn't oppress nobody. She just made a stipulation. والزوج هو الذي أسقط حقه. Now if the man says, okay, yes, you got it. I'm not gonna just you, no woman, no others, never. All right. If he honor her stipulation, he says, the sheikh says, so he's the one who forfeit his right. Okay. فإذا كان له الحق أن يتزوج أكثر من واحدة هو أسقطه. نعم. He has the right in Islam by the text from the Quran that that man has the right to marry one or two or three or four, and of course with certain condition, and a person have to know these things before they do that. But he's the one who forfeit that right. He's the one who says, no, just you. I'm not going to marry nobody else. And therefore, under the, that uh, stipulation, then Sheikh said, So what prevent this stipulation from being sound and valid? ما ذهب إليه الإمام أحمد من أن ذلك الشرط صحيح انتهى من من الشرح الممتع. So, so therefore the sound opinion in this matter here is the opinion chosen by Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal رحمه الله that such stipulation is sound. I mean, if a woman uh, made a stipulation that her husband does not take on another wife as long as he's married to her or she's married to him. Okay? So it's sahih. So some men, they should understand this clearly. Amen. But what if now, if the woman, if this man made a stipulation, okay, says, now just you, and later on he's like, well, you know what, I'm getting married. She's like, Akhi. 
there is a stipulation and you agreed. Well, you like, well, you know, that was a couple of years ago, a couple of months ago. <laughs> you know, things change. It's not always the winter. It's, you know, things how things is. So how, what's, what's she do now? Does it automatically, the marriage is gone, she's divorced? ينبغي أن يعلم أن الزوجة إذا أخل بهذا الشرط لم تطلق زوجته بمجرد ذلك بل يثبت لها الحق في فسخ النكاح فإما أن تفسخ وإما أن تتنازل عن الشرط وترضى بما فعل الزوج وتبقى زوجة له Just because the man break that agreement doesn't make that woman automatically being divorced meaning if he go and marry another woman she's divorced automatically it doesn't work like that but, but, but we give her the right to ask for fasr, nullification of the marriage. Okay? And, or, she has that, or if she wants to be patient and give up that right and that stipulation and remain with him. Okay? Now. The Maqal al-Shaykh, Hafizahullah, wa min al-shuruti al-sahih hafi nikah ida sharatat alayhi an la yatasarra aw la yatazawaj alayha fa in wafawa illa fala al-fasr لحديث أحق الشروط أن توفوا بها ما استحللتم به الفروج متفق عليه عند البخاري المسلم حيث عقب بن عامر This is similar to what we were talking about Likewise amongst the valid condition made by a woman before marriage is when she stipulates that uh, her suitor, the man who wants to marry her must, must not enjoy a slave girl if, if, if the one there is a slavery or marry uh, another woman after their marriage. Okay? So this is a valid condition that has to be fulfilled by the husband. Otherwise, she has the right to invalidate the marriage. Otherwise, she has the right to invalidate the marriage. In this regard, the Prophet ﷺ said, the worthiest conditions to be fulfilled are those that make it legal for you to enjoy yourselves even by the way of, of uh, uh, intercourse and the like so these are the conditions set in the marriage contract to fulfill those contracts كذلك ولو شرطت وكذا لو شرطت عليه أن لا يخرجها من دارها أو بلادها صح هذا الشرط ولم يكن له إخراجها إلا بإذنها likewise amongst such valid conditions is when the bride stipulates that the person he wants to marry her must not take her out of her house, meaning her homeland, or homeland. You see? She says, okay, she's from one, 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 one area. She's like, okay, but I'm not going to leave here. I'll stay here. Country, city, state, whatever. Okay? So the man must not take her out except by her permission in accordance with her condition. Okay? People need to understand these things. That's if they make these stipulations. Okay? وَكَدَ لَوْ شَرَتَتْ أَلَّا يُفَرِّقَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ أَوْلَادِهَا أَوْ أَبَوَيْهَا صَحَّ هَذَا الشَّرْطِ فَإِنْ خَالَفَهُ فَلَهَا الْفَصْخِ Likewise, Sheikh Fawzani says, it is invalid, it is a valid actually, it is a valid condition if the bride stipulates that her future husband must not separate between her and her children or parents. Okay? This condition must be fulfilled by the husband, otherwise she has the right to rescind the marriage contract. Okay? So, likewise, she has parents. And she's like, okay, no problem, but she's going to stay in this city close to her parents because they need her for whatever reason. He has the right to say yes or no. If he says, no, I need you in my state or in my city or whatever, she's like, no, I can't do that. And that's it. He go by his way, she go with hers. But if he agreed, now a couple of months later he started like, oh, you're gonna get, we are going to get out of here and this and that. No, that's, that's a stipulation. If he opposes it, then she has the right to invalidate the marriage, Sheikh Fawzan says. 
ولو شرطت زيادة في مهرها These are still from those uh, conditions that are valid in the marriage, okay? Stipulated and they are therefore va valid and they stand. ولو شرطت زيادة في مهرها أو كونه من نقد معين يعني المهر من نقد معين تريد فضة ذهب كذا صح الشرط وكان لازما وكان لازما لازم يجب عليه الوفاء به ولها الفسخ بعدمه وخيارها في ذلك على التراخي فتفسخ متى شاءت ما لم يوجد منها ما يدل على رضاها ما علمها بمخالفته لما شرطته عليه فحينئذ يسقط خيارها It is also a valid condition if the bride stipulates a, an increase in a dowry. They said here in the English, somebody has a pen for me. Here they says a larger, a larger, but in, in, the, in the Arabic it says ziyada, so it's increase. It's, it's, which make it larger anyway but we just go with the text in Arabic it says an increase person said okay this is the dowry but then she says okay I agree with that but I want an increase I want a bit more and he says no problem you got that okay uh, or that the dowry must be paid in a certain currency she wants it in a certain currency and now so This is a valid and binding condition that the groom must fulfill. For example, she wants it in dollars, she wants it in dirham, she wants it in real. Huh? She wants it like that? He said yes, no, or she wants the gold or silver or the like. So this is a valid and binding condition that the groom must fulfill. Otherwise, she has the right to invalidate the marriage contract. So he says, so therefore she has the option to invalidate it at any time she likes, unless there is a sign of her consent, although being aware of his violation of her condition. In such a case, her right of choice is to be dis disregarded. Okay? to be disregarded because sometimes the women they make stipulation but then they turns out later on and do an action or something else that shows that they are pleased so that will nullify her stipulation okay قال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه للذي قضى عليه بلزوم ما شرطته عليه زوجته فقال الرجل اذا يطلقننا فقال عمر مقاطع الحقوق عند الشروط ولحديث المسلمون على شروطهم الحديث حديث المسلمون على شروطهم مر معنا قبل وهو الحديث حص قال الإمام الألباني حسن صحيح كما في وهو جزء من حديث في سنن أبي داود he said in this regard عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه obliged the man to fulfill what his wife made as a condition before their marriage before their marriage but the man says so they they may divorce us then meaning those women so they may divorce us then Omar answered the judgment on rights is based upon the stated conditions that's it This view is also supported by the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he says, Muslims must keep to the conditions they have made. And this hadith is uh, a part actually. He come to the end of a hadith, uh, number 3594 in Sunan Abi Dawood. And, uh, and the Imam al-Albani, في تحقيق Sunan Abi Dawood, he says a hadith Hassan Sahih. قال العلامة ابن القيم رحمه الله يجب الوفاء بهذه الشروط التي هي أحق أن يوفيها وهو مقتدى الشرع والعقل والقياس الصحيح فإن المرأة لم ترد ببذل بضعها لزوجه إلا على هذا الشرط 
ولو لم يجب الوفاء به لم يكن العقد عن تراض وكان إلزاما بما لم تلتزمه وبما لم يلزمها الله به ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن حاشية الروض المربع ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى he said such conditions must be kept these conditions in the marriage in the marriage contract those stipulations made by the women must be kept and fulfilled as they are the worthiest to be fulfilled according to the principles of Sharia, the Islamic law, reasoning also on sound and logical deduction, the ijma. Hence, if the woman does not consent to give herself to someone except on a certain condition, such a condition must be fulfilled. Such me, such condition must be fulfilled. Otherwise, the marriage contract will not be established on her consent, and it will make her liable for and called for duties that are not enjoined on her by Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are some of the conditions that the Sheikh mentioned and stipulations that are valid. And uh, people, that's why people before they get married, they should learn. This section, so they so they know, because the man he don't have no clue. He's want to go get married, and then the woman make a stipulation. He says, "Are you Salafi?" Inshallah, yeah, I'm, I'm on the way of the Salaf. But what are you talking? Are you going against the Quran? But because of the lack of understanding of these matters, you gotta have understanding. Inshallah, Taala. If a woman make that stipulation, then the man can explain to her through the wali that listen this and that alhamdulillah but at least you should be aware of these these matters the sheikh thaniyan ash-shuroot al-fasida fi nikah thaniyan those invalid stipulations and conditions in the marriage contract qalu ash-shuroot al-fasida fi nikah naw'an and they uh, they involve actually uh there are two types. There are two two kinds. The the, the first of them, Shurut on Fasida, Tubtil al There are those invalid conditions that invalidate the marriage. You see? Because there is other ones that Sheikh is gonna mention that they are invalid, but they do not invalidate the marriage contract. They are invalid in themselves, but the marriage contract stands. But now, at first, he mentioned the invalid conditions. They are not valid, like we just learned. They are invalid, and therefore they invalidate the marriage contract. And under these ones, that they are invalid conditions and stipulations, and invalidate the marriage contract, there are three types or kinds. Al-awwal nikah al-shigar. The first of one is the, the marriage that is called shigar, marriage by shigar. The shigh, which is the marriage which involves exchange of women under guardianship, as the shigh is going to mention. Okay. Some, some, so he's going to explain that. And he says this Shin Ra Rain Alif Ra Shigar. It is the type of marriage in which a guardian or a wali gives his daughter or a woman under his guardianship in marriage to another person on the condition that that other person give him his daughter or a woman under his guardianship in marriage too. 
You see? Two men, they have two daughters. He says, okay, I want to marry your daughter. He's like, no problem if he let me marry yours. You see? The, the sheikh, he says, uh, and there is no mahar. Okay? So he said, on, 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 and without any dowry, the mahar paid by either. None of those two guardians paid the mahar for those women. In this type of marriage, the sheikh says, in this type of marriage, a woman is given in marriage in return for another. Okay, there is a part that he didn't translate in here. In English, I don't know why they, they left it. But however, they said it's also it is called shigar from the shagar, an action of a dog. It is not translated in English. You don't see it, Hussein, right? It's not in there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They skipped it. They didn't see it. Allah Anyway, the sheikh said also it was called, this marriage called shigar, because it is, it is a despicable act. He says it's taken from another action by a dog. When a dog uh, urinate, have you even seen a dog doing that? What they do? They raise their, their back leg up in the air and then urinate. He says it was called like that because of it is despicable. Okay? We had a new, this, this, this part was not, it's not translated. I don't see it, at least in the tabah that I have. قال وهذا النوع جعلت فيه امرأة بدل امرأة وقد أجمعوا على تحريمه وهو باطل يجب التفريق فيه سواء كان مصرحا فيه بنفي المهر أو مسكوتا عنه لحديث ابن عمر أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى عن الشغار والشغار أن يزوج الرجل ابنته على أن يزوجه الآخر ابنته وليس بينهما صداق متفق عليه He says, in this type of marriage, which is shigar, a woman is given in marriage in return for another. In return for another. We have a unanimous agreement from the scholars that such a marriage is prohibited. The ulama ajma'u ala tahrimihi is a unanimous agreement that it is forbidden. It is prohibited. It is deemed invalid and the couple must be legally separated in this case. Whether they stated that there is no dowry paid or they kept silent about it. Because of the hadith of Ibn Umar عنhuma, that the Prophet forbade shigar marriage which means that someone marries his daughter to another and the latter marries his daughter to the former without any dowry paid by, by either or either. Right now. Read by Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Rahimahum Allah. Waqala Shaykh Taqi Din Wafasul Khitab and Allah Harama Nikahu Shigar Nikahu Shigar Lian al Waliya Yeji Waliya and Yuzawija Muliyatahu Ida Khatabaha Kufun ونظر لها نظر مصلحة لا نظر شهوة والصداق حق لها لا له وليس للولي ولا للأبي أن يزوجها إلا لمصلحتها وليس له أن يزوجها لغرضه لا لمصلحته لا لمصلحتها ومثل هذا تسقط ولايته تسقط ولايته He mentioned that Sheikh Taqi Din says, so the correct conclusion here is that Allah prohibited the marriage for, of Shigar. This is because the legal guardian must not give his daughter in marriage except to the one who is considered a suitable match for her. 
In addition, the guardian is supposed to look for her best interest, not just to satisfy his desires in such a marriage exchange. He should look for the best man for her. As, and the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us what to look for. The man came and wants to marry the, the person that you are in charge of, the daughter, or could be sister, could be niece, for example. Then he said, if you are pleased with his religion, this person who is religious, he practiced the religion, not just he's a Muslim by affiliation, but he, because he was born in some Muslim country, and that's it, he don't know nothing, no aqidah, no akhlaq, no, no practice. And that's unfortunately some women, they end up like that. When the guardian failed to ask about these more important things, to adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you'll find a, a wali of a woman, he's not interested in no deen, he don't ask, he was your aqidah, huh? tell me about your aqidah in asma' wa sifat, in this, in that. What is the books you read in Aqidah? Ain Allah. What is your creed about the angels, about the hereafter? Adab al Qabr. Nuzul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sifat. They you don't. Know. What they ask? How much you make? What do you do for life? How many houses you have? If a person says he has three gas stations, all of them loaded with what? Haram. Liquor, gambling, duchies, all of these things. Now he's like, oh yeah, he's good. A lot of money, good. Riba, no problem. He got a house, big house, but from the bank. Usury, it's okay. Big cars, riba, it's all right, no problem. This is this is a cheating. Those guardians they cheat in those women, and if they don't turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with sincere repentance and rectify their mistakes, Subhanallah, what they gonna say huh? in front of Allah on Yom Al Qiyam? A person should look first at the Deen and the religion, and if that person is alhamdulillah rich or has alhamdulillah money and this from halal, that's good alhamdulillah. I know, but it should not be the condition. So Allah salamu alayhi wa So, so the scholars they agree. Uh, we, now we're here. The, the Sheikh Taqi Din, he says, Rahimallah. So that the guardian is supposed to look for her best interest, not just to satisfy his desire in such a marriage exchange. Okay? Moreover, the dowry is the bride's do right. That's hers. Not the guardian's. Therefore, neither the guardian nor the father is to give the woman in marriage unless in her best interest, not to favor his own desire and interest over hers. Otherwise, his guardianship is deemed invalid. Is deemed invalid. ومتى كان غرضه أن يعاود فرجها بفرج الأخرى لم ينظر في مصلحتها وصار كمن زوجها على مال له لا لها وكلاهما لا يجوز وعلى هذا لو سمى صداقا حيلة والمقصود المشاغرة لم يجوز كما نص عليه أحمد يعني الإمام أحمد لأن مقصوده أن يزوجها بتزوجه الأخرى والشرع بين أنه لا يقع هذا إلا لغرض الولي لا لمصلحة المرأة سواء سمى مع ذلك صداق أو لم يسمي كما قاله معاوية وغيره أحمد جوزه مع الصداق المقصود دون الحيلة مراعاة لمصلحة المرأة في الصداق انتهى كلامه شيخ تقي الدين He said also when the guardian exchanges the woman under his guardianship in return for another he then is not looking for her best interest. Thus he is acting as if he is giving her in marriage in return for some money that would be his, not hers. Some people, they do that. 
How much you give me? And then he says, I give you this. Thousand dollars. He says, somebody gave fifteen hundred. Sitting in a car or something. Allah al Musta'an. So Allah salam al Afiyah. You see the adl of Al-Islam, the justice of Al-Islam, the akhlaq Al-Islam. Some women, they, alhamdulillah, they become Muslim when they study the rights that Islam gives to women. Because those who don't know, they think, they just hear what the news say, because the enemies of Al-Islam, they just want to tarnish Islam. They want to do things. They come up with stuff that you never heard of. Yes, the enemies of Islam, whether the, the, the enemies by, you know, by because of they are on another religion, or the enemies who, those who claim to be Muslims, but they are on something else. They're not practicing the correct Islam. They're not upon the manhaj of Asara. They're upon the aqaid dal al-batil al-munharifah. And they strive hard to turn the people away from Islam. But when the women, they read these things, they say, SubhanAllah, this is Allahu Akbar. We have all these rights. Allahu Akbar, this is good. So he said, so, so this man who is acting as, as if he is giving her in marriage in return for someone, for some money, that would be his, not hers, both cases are impermissible. Consequently, if, the, if, the, if he pretends a dowry was paid as a way to make this marriage lawful, while in the fact intending shi'ar marriage, some people don't want to play games. So now here is a dowry and stuff, but the intention is something else. Okay? He said, as stated by Imam Ahmad, and this is because his real aim is to marry another woman in return for marriage, for marrying his daughter, or any woman under his guardianship. In this respect, Sharia, the Islamic law, states that such a behavior of the guardian is only intended to serve his own desire, not the woman's best interest, whether there is a dowry or not, as maintained by Muawiyah and others. However, Imam Ahmad, he is in the view that yes, it is permissible only when there is a dowry, which is not just intended to be a means of cheating, provided the woman's interest with regard to her due dowry has been considered. So those guardians, they have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to apply the sunnah in this regard. They have to look at the best interests for those women that they are under their guardianship. From Maqala, <coughs> شيخ صالح الفوزان فإذا سمى لكل واحد منهما مهر المستقل كامل بلا حيلة مع أخذ موافقة المرأتين صح ذلك لانتفاء الدرر So if there is a certain dowry given separately to each of the two brides without any intention of cheating them provided that each of the two brides gives her consent she's, she wants to go with that marriage such a marriage then is deemed valid طيب but there is no harm the harm that uh, is caused for her by the shi'ar is no longer there because they want to get married نعم ثم قال الثاني نكاح المحلل the second of these types because he mentioned he said there are three of them نكاح المحلل وهو أن يتزوجها بشرط أنه متى حللها للأول طلقها أو نوى التحليل بلا شرط يذكر في العقد أو اتفق عليه قبل العقد ففي جميع هذه الأحوال يبطل النكاح لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أخبركم بالتيس المستعار قالوا بلى يا رسول الله قال هو المحلل لعن الله المحلل والمحلل له رواه ابن ماجه والحاكم وغيرهما وحسنه الألباني رحمه الله تعالى كما في تحقيقه لسنن ابن ماجه وكذلك في الإرواء. The second type that is not uh, permissible is a kind of unlawful marriage. 
when a man marries a woman who is divorced irrevocably uh, for three times. When a, when, a woman, when a man divorces his wife three times, at that moment she is not permissible for him. If a man divorces his wife the first time, she is still his wife until the idda is over. He can take her back during the idda. If the idda comes to an end, she is not his wife anymore, but they can get back together if they have a new marriage contract. Okay? During the idda, no marriage contract is involved if it's the first or the second divorce. But if the idda is over after the first or the second divorce, it's very important to remember these conditions, then he cannot just say, okay, you're still my wife. He talked to her well. He and the woman, she, she can say at that moment, yes or no. Right now. It's one of the conditions of the marriage, to, to be valid. She can say, no, I don't want to marry him anymore. I have enough. Okay? Or she can go back, but with a new marriage contract. But when a man divorces his wife three times, at that moment of the third divorce, of course, she's not his wife anymore. There is no idda as related to him. Yes, it's upon her to go through the idda before she, she marry another person. She has to go, to go through the idda. But as for the man who divorced her for the third time, that's it. And he cannot marry her. It's not like after her idda, okay, let's do a marriage, another new marriage contract. No, that's not permissible for him. Until she, that woman, willingly, with no gimmicks, no games, she married another man, and then something went wrong, and divorce took place, and the idda comes to now he can marry her. But now, this marriage, that, this way is halal, it's permissible. But this way that the sheikh is talking about here, it is not permissible. Why? Because some people, they play games. You will find a man divorce his wife for the third time. And then even though when they do that, they try to get fatawa. I was, I was, uh, I was, I didn't know what I was talking about. I just woke up from sleep. I just worked double shift. I was uh, hungry and angry. All these things. They just want to get out. Get the fatwa that tell them, oh, that third man divorce is not valid, so it's okay. Anyway. But then when they get the fatwa that law, listen, man, you have no grounds that divorce takes place. So what is now? This is not your wife anymore. Oh, I love her. I want to be with her. No, that's it. It's over. Unless she marry another man and divorce takes place. And what they do in this case? They want to go and hire a man to marry her. He had a villa. said, okay, okay, listen, man, look, do me a favor. Favor? Talking about, uh, it's not like uh, doing a favor like that. Do me a favor, you know. Remember, I, I, I remember when you were stuck in a, in a traffic and I went and get, give you a jump and helped you. This is a favor? What are you talking about? You must have done it for the sake of Allah. And you find some ignorant people who they say, what, what, anything for you, what do you want? Just marry this woman for a couple hours and divorce her, okay? That's it. You got it. And now he's doing him what? A favor and, and, and deserving the curse of Allah. This is very serious. The Sheikh said, this is a kind of unlawful marriage. When a man marries a woman who is divorced three times, just to make her lawful, to be remarried to her former husband. I just give you that so you can understand this. On the condition that he will divorce her once this purpose is achieved. Whether there is a condition stated in the marriage or agreed upon before concluding the contract or not, such marriage is deemed invalid anyway according to the following hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, Shall I tell you about the borrowed billy goat? They, the companions said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ. He said, It is the muhallil. May Allah curse the muhallil and the muhallal lahu. May Allah curse that man who married that woman for that reason, just to make her permissible for the former. And may Allah curse the former one. 
who is involved in this evil transaction. Amen. If you don't mind, I'm just going to read the English so we can finish this chapter tonight, inshallah ta'ala. He says, number three, the marriage depend, dependent on a future condition. They want to get married, but they do some, some conditions. An example of such marriage is when the guardian of the woman says to the suitor, meaning the future husband, I will let you marry her when the first of so-and-so month comes, or if her mother consents to the marriage. Such a marriage contract is deemed invalid. For marriage is considered a contract of compensation, meaning represented in the dowry that make it lawful for the man to injure the woman as a wife. Therefore, it is invalid to make such a contract dependent on a future possibility. Similarly, it is invalid to make the marriage contract temporary. It's not permissible. As when a guardian says to the suitor, I will let you marry her on the condition that you divorce her tomorrow. Or I will let you marry her for a month or a year. Such temporary marriage is what is called marriage of mut'ah. If you heard this, nikahul mut'ah. The marriage of mut'ah, meaning temporary marriage, intended just for fulfilling their desires. And then he mentioned that Sheikh Taqiyuddin Rahimullah said all the the many all the many elaborate meaning mutawatir hadith agree that Allah exalted be he prohibited the marriage of muta'ah the temporary marriage is, is prohibited after it had been made lawful it was lawful but in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, for a while, for a shorter time, and the Prophet ﷺ make it haram, and that's it. So it is haram for us. Moreover, Imam al-Qurtubi, rahimahullah ta'ala says, all narrations agree that the time when the marriage of Mut'a was lawful did not last for long, as it was soon prohibited. Then both the Salaf, the predecessors, the early Muslim scholars, and the Khalaf, the late Muslim scholars, unanimously agree on its prohibition. They all agree that it's prohibited, except for those ignorant people from the Rawafid, said scholars, I don't know why they translate as scholars, they're not scholars, except for those deviant Rafida. See, they say here, the scholars of this, not, the Sheikh didn't say no scholars. Except, except for the Rawafid, whose opinion does not count for anything, okay? Does not count. I know. Because the Rafid, until now, they do that. They marry for three days. Astaghfirullah. Marry for three days, marry for a moment or so, now. And they said they follow Ali, but it's not right by Ali, the hadith that prohibited that. That's Allah, but they are people of desires. They follow their desire, that's what it is. Now, we conclude this chapter by those shurut, shurut fasid, and of sidun nikah. Invalid conditions that do not invalidate the marriage. So there are those invalid condition that were mentioned that invalidate the marriage contract. Now this, in this section, those invalid, they are invalid conditions, but yet do not invalidate the marriage. The Sheikh said, if there is a condition in the marriage contract that involves violating any of the women's rights, such a condition is invalid, is invalid, though the marriage itself is still deemed valid. Examples of such invalid condition that do not invalidate marriage are the cases when the man stipulates that there will be no dowry for the woman or that there will be no alimony for her, so he's not going to take care of her or nothing, 
or that the nights he will spend with her will be less than those of her fellow wife. Though such conditions are invalid, are invalid, they do not invalidate the marriage, as they are of additional meaning to the marriage contract. Thus, mentioning them in the contract is not necessary, and ignoring them is not harmful. He said, for instance, if the suitor makes a condition that the woman must be a Muslim, the one he want to marry, I gotta, she got to be Muslim. And then she turns out to be one of the people of the scripture. He made a condition, he's going to be a Muslim, but now he's like, she's a Jew or a Christian. The marriage in this case is valid. And the husband has the choice whether to invalidate it or not. He has the choice. Similarly, if the suitor stipulates that the woman must be a virgin or pretty woman or a woman of noble origin, and then he discovers that she is otherwise, she is otherwise, he has the right to invalidate the marriage as his condition is not fulfilled. Her name is not fulfilled. And then they uh, did not translate another part here, right? He shift. He didn't translate the whole part. There is a part that is, that is missing. It's not translated. Missing a part from translation. Now, which is, the Sheikh he mentioned, Likewise, if a woman married a free man, but later on find out that he actually is a slave, okay, she has the right and a choice to invalidate that marriage. Likewise, if a woman, she was a slave girl, and she was married to a slave man, but she was freed. Okay, she's the one that she was freed. She has the right to invalidate the marriage. Because when Barira, radiallahu anha, she, she was freed and she was uh, under, meaning married to a slave, she chose to, to, to separate herself from him as it is in Sayyid al-Bukhari and other than him, like in, uh, from the hadith of Ibn Abbas. This is a part that it was not translated. So with this, alhamdulillah, we can try and end to this chapter and also to this class. We continue, inshallah ta'ala, next. Uh, defects in, in marriage. Um, pertaining to the spouses themselves. What are the defects that they may interfere with the marriage contract or with the marriage itself if there is some defects in the spouses? That's what we're going to learn, inshallah ta'ala. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim al-kathira.